Hi, and welcome to the second of our videos looking at food molecules and food chemistry. In this video, we're going to revisit lipids, which we've seen previously in Unit 3 when we looked at biofuels and biodiesel. So hopefully you're feeling pretty confident with our lipid structures at this stage. But let's get started. The key knowledge for this topic and the focus of what we're looking at is fats and oils known as triglycerides. We need to be able to understand their structural features, including the formation of the ester link. We need to be able to distinguish between fats and oils by reference to their melting point and explain this with reference to their structures of the fatty acid tails and the strength of the intermolecular forces, something we should be pretty confident with by now. We also need to be able to talk about the chemical structures of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids and distinguish between essential and non-essential fatty acids, remembering that the focus of Unit 4 is the intake of nutrients through food and what that does for us in terms of biological processes. Then we need to look at the structural differences between what we refer to as omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids that you may have heard about in the media. So just a review of the biomolecules that are around. There are four main types of biomolecules, which are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We don't look at nucleic acids. We have already done proteins. We're doing lipids at the moment. And next up, we will be looking at carbohydrates. For these, the empirical formula or the atoms that are contained in each one when we're looking at biomolecules are pretty much carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for our carbohydrates and our lipids. With proteins, we add in nitrogen and we can add in a little bit of sulfur as well. So when we're talking about lipids, they are a group of molecules that contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we refer to these as fats, which are solid at room temperature, or oils, which are liquid at room temperature. This is the main distinction between them. Okay, fats are solid at room temperature while oils are liquid. Waxes and steroids, including cholesterol, are other types of lipids, but we don't look at those in a lot of detail here. The majority of fats and oils are formed by condensation reactions, in fact, all of the ones that we will look at, between a molecule of glycerol, which is in your data booklet and the structures given here, and three molecules of fatty acids to form the triglycerides. So all fats and oils are compounds known as triglycerides. While these are the biopolymers as we know them, they are large macromolecules that are formed by condensation reactions. So we look at them in this unit. The glycerol contains three hydroxyl functional groups, and then the fatty acids contain a carboxylic acid group or a carboxyl group. The condensation reaction between these forms an ester linkage and we will get three molecules of water for each full triglyceride that is formed. In terms of foods and where we get fats and oils from, they're largely obtained through our diet. We can have oil in the terms of cooking oil that we use, but they're also present in a large number of foods that include meat, fish, dairy, eggs, nuts, and of course, fried foods and oils themselves. They're a major source of energy in the diet and have been associated and contributed to an increase in obesity due to the amount of high fat and high sugar foods that we're seeing in more convenience diets. Used as a store of chem potential chem chemical energy, i.e. if we don't use it all, we will store it up. Fats and oils, as I mentioned before, are the same type of molecule and their physical properties are what are used to define them. Generally, fats are solid, so this would be the white fat that you might see on steak, butter, um, coconut fat, those kinds of things, while oils are liquids at room temperature, olive oil, canola oil, those kinds of things. So if we look at the structure of triglycerides, they, we need to remember they're large molecules. They consider fatty acids, which has a carboxylic acid with a large carbon chain, and glycerol, they're non-polar, so they are insoluble in water. Remember, water and fat don't mix. So lipids are formed through condensation reactions. So if we have a look at the synthesis, and we've seen this before, so hopefully you are feeling more confident with it. 
We have three molecules of fatty acids, of which the structures are given in our data booklet, react with one equivalent of glycerol to form the triglycerides. We did the opposite of this when we talked about the formation of the biodiesel. We talked about the hydrolysis of the triglycerides to form three equivalents of the fatty acid and one equivalent of glycerol. This time around, when we're talking about the synthesis of fats, we have three equivalents of fatty acid reacting with one equivalent of glycerol in an esterification condensation reaction. So this is what it looks like if they ask you to draw it out showing all the bonds. These are very large molecules, so they will take a while to draw. And generally, if you do, you find you have to elongate the bond between the carbons and the glycerol. But what we have is the hydroxyls reacting with the carboxyl. Okay, it takes the hydrogen from the glycerol and the OH from the carboxyl forming water. So we have the new ester link that is formed here. So we have the C double bond O onto the fatty acid chain and the O onto the glycerol. This structure comes up a lot in exam questions for you to be able to draw. So please make sure that you understand how to form the ester linkage between the glycerol and the fatty acids. So they are of quite significant biological importance. We use fatty acids to make different um, compounds in the body. Most lipids are non-polar, and so that insolubility in water, and they're one of our sources of fat-soluble vitamins that we will look at a little bit later on in this unit. Okay, so our fat-soluble items are A, D, E, and K, and these are all vitamins where we can end up taking in too much of them because they're stored in our fat rather than being processed and excreted in our urine during the day as water-soluble vitamins are. So with saturated fats and unsaturated fats, remembering saturated fats have only single bonds to carbon, they will have the general formula Cn2n H2n plus 1 C double bond OOH. For every double bond that we have, we will take away two hydrogens. So we, it's sort of like a reverse addition reaction. So if they contain a C double bond C, it becomes CnH2n minus 1 C double bond OOH. And the more double bonds that we have, making them polyunsaturated, means that we start to take away more. So this is CnH2n minus 3. So we can see here that this would have two double bonds because it is four less than the saturated. So we have four less hydrogens than the saturated. So we have two double bonds present in this. So we have saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. And these you would have heard of probably if you've done any um, health and human or PE or even just um, hearing people talk about fats in terms of diet. So most triglycerides will have two or three different fatty acids attached. The question will always let you know if it's a mixture of different fatty acids or one. They differ in length and therefore can contain a different number of C double bond C. Okay, so this is how we start to see different fats and oils. We looked at these, so just making sure that the saturation level of the fatty acid is saturated with CnH2n plus 1 with our carboxyl, monounsaturated CnH2n minus 1 and the carboxyl, and then polyunsaturated where that we lose one, uh, we lose two hydrogens for each double bond that is present. This can change the way that the structures form as well because the double bonds will put a kink into the chain which prevents the stacking. This is why we see saturated fats being solids at room temperature because they are all straight chain saturated hydrocarbons. So they are able to stack closely together having higher melting, uh, sorry, higher melting points and boiling points. When we put the double bonds in, we put kinks into the chain, therefore minimizing the amount of stacking and lowering the melting point and boiling point so that they are liquids at room temperature. This is just another reiteration of saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated, showing you the semi-structural formulas. 
numbering that we are allowed to show in our semi-structural, we can show the presence of the double bonds. We've learnt now about cis and trans double bonds, so the isomers that we see around those. The presence of cis or trans groups in the double bonds in our fatty acids can have quite an effect on their properties. And you may have heard of trans fats and then cis fats. Most naturally occurring fatty acids will have a cis arrangement, okay? And this gives the permanent kink that we talked about previously. It doesn't allow them to pack, so they have weaker dispersion forces. The trans double bond, however, will be more like our saturated fatty acids in that it doesn't cause the chain to bend. That trans double bond continues the zigzag configuration down the train. So we see a larger difference in melting point and boiling points for cis unsaturated fats. So as we said, there is all of these are listed in your data booklet and they actually provide you the semi-structural formula as well. So you can see the, where the double bonds form. This means that you should be able to classify them as saturated, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated simply by looking at them. And we did this earlier. What I want you to do is pause the slide and see which ones you will identify as saturated, unsaturated or polyunsaturated as you go through. Okay, hopefully you have looked at each of these and you can see that the first three that we have here are all saturated. They follow that CNH2N, okay, plus one C double bond OOH. Okay, so that would be 22 plus one is 23. And we can also see that the semi structural formula shows no double bonds. For palmitoleic, we have a single double bond here. So this would be a monosaturated. This is going to be saturated. And it's monounsaturated, sorry. Um, this will be monounsaturated. Um, then we have this double bond is inside the bracket. So this is going to be polyunsaturated. Polyunsaturated saturated and polyunsaturated here as well. Okay, be careful to look for where those double bonds form with inside the brackets that are saying that that repeats. Okay, as we said, melting point increases as the hydrocarbon chain increases in length because we increase dispersion port forces. It also de um, decreases as the number of carbon-carbon double bonds increase. So if we have a polyunsaturated oil, it will have a lower melting point compared to a monounsaturated. In terms of our lipids or our fats being essential or non-essential, we, because we can convert fats into fatty acids in the body by hydrolyzing the fats, they can then be used as other compounds in our body. We have fats that are non-essential fatty acids. Okay, stearic acid can be converted into oleic acid. So oleic acid is a non-essential, but stearic would be essential. So fatty acids that are classified as essential fatty acids are not produced by humans. So we have to consume them in our diet. These are linolenic, linoleic, and arachidonic acid. These must be included in our diets, one of which is an omega-3, two are omega-6. So any healthy diet must have an adequate amount of omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. Which brings us to classifying omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid. Unsaturated fats are classified by the position of the first carbon-carbon double bond, okay? Remembering that we always number our chain from the carboxyl, which makes this the alpha end, okay? Because carboxyl would be carbon one. But for omega-3 and omega-6, omega means the end, so these are actually counting from the end opposite to the carboxyl. So an omega-6 fatty acid will start at the end opposite to the carboxyl. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. And on the sixth carbon, we see the first double bond appearing. Okay. And then omega-3, we have the alpha end with the carboxyl. We go to the other end of the molecule, to the omega end, and we go one, two, three, and we see the first double bond. So an omega-6, omega meaning end, has the carbon carbon first carbon carbon double bond from the uh, the sixth carbon from the end and an omega-3 from the third carbon from the end this is what it looks like when those bonds are all included okay remembering depending on it doesn't matter if it's written left to right or right to left find the carboxyl this is your alpha carbon go to the opposite end this will be your omega carbon and then count from here. One, two, three. This is an omega three. One, two, three, four, five, six, omega six fatty acids. Okay, just a quick multiple choice. This, this video has been going for quite a long time as it is to have a look. And we're asked in this one, which one of the following fatty acids is an omega three fatty acid? Remembering that this table here is in our data booklet. Okay, so you have this. So we want an omega-3. So if this is the C double bond OH is our alpha end, we want to go to the opposite side. Arachidonic, palmitoleic, linolenic, and linoleic. So I'm going to look where they are and make sure that I have the right ones. And here, so here's my carboxyl. So these are written with them on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go to this end, one, and then this will be four, five. This is actually a omega six, so it's not that one. Linoleic, again, carboxyl, one, four is five, so it's going to be six again. C double bond OH, one, two. I've got this repeated, so this is going to be three, and I have a double bond, so this is in fact a three. And the last one we wanted to look at was arachidon. So we go here, C double bond OH. If we've gotten this right, it should be a six. So one, four, that's five, and then six. So the correct answer is linolenic. Make sure you make, don't get confused with these because linoleic and linolenic look very similar. It is linolenic that we want. So C would be the correct answer. Okay, that's it for lipids. There'll be one more video on hydrolysis of lipids and we'll move on to carbohydrates. And I'll see you in class.